Okay, so in uh, last class we we saw the two D rotation of a rigid body. Uh, we defined uh, what the rigid body. What do we mean by the rigid body? And uh, then we defined the angular velocity associated with the rigid body as uh, omega. Uh, and we saw that if we draw any uh, arbitrary line uh, on the rigid body, each uh, line uh, rotates by the same amount. So if we take the derivative of that uh, rate of change, that is basically the magnitude of the angular velocity. And the direction of the angular velocity is perpendicular to this plane since we are discussing only the 2D uh, bodies and the 2D motion. So we define the angular velocity as the rate of uh, the angular uh, rate of the angular change in the angular position, uh, and the direction is in the k k direction. So then we defined um, the relative velocity of j with respect to some i, but uh, but. The I and J both belong to the same rigid body. So we obtain a very important result, and that is the velocity of J with respect to I. Uh, if this object, uh, if I and J belong to the same rigid object, then this is equal to omega cross RJ with respect to I, where omega is the angular velocity of the rigid body. And uh, RJ I is the position vector of the J with respect to the I point. OK, so. Then we discuss some dynamics related to the rigid body and we. Uh, discuss and we discuss the inertia associated with the uh, rigid body. And finally, what we got uh, is that angular uh, momentum with respect to some reference point uh, we can write it as the angular momentum of the center of mass about that point which is this linear momentum of the center of mass cross sorry r of the center of mass with respect to that c cross the linear momentum of the uh, body uh, center of mass and ig omega where ig is the moment of inertia of the rigid body and we define this ig uh, we define this ig somewhere yeah if i remember so we defined it as summation of mi ri with respect to g isn't it but where we defined it so yeah Let here say, yeah yeah so we yeah, defined yes. summation of mi ri g square as i it is the moment of inertia of the body with respect to the. So we finally got this equation. Uh, so you can use this equation that if you. So basically, what uh, idea is that we know the external moments from physics. We know the external moment. So basically, this thing is known, and we use this equation to find out the omega dot. So this is the basic idea um, utilizing this uh, while using this equation. We are basically trying to solve the omega dot. When you find the omega dot, you can integrate that omega dot to get omega. And if you get the omega using the kinematics, you can find out uh, position and other stuff also. OK, so how uh, we will be like if we know omega, how we will be able to find the position of different points in the uh, in the in different frames. So this is the today's talk. Uh, how we will be doing this. So again, we can will consider. Repeat? Yeah. Can you repeat what we will do, sir? Okay. So I am saying that if we use, so we know external talks. For example, if we take a pendulum, we know what uh, external forces are and where they are acting. So we know 
this external torque. And we uh, solve this equation for omega dot and acceleration. OK, so we will get acceleration and we will get omega dot, which is angular acceleration. And from the so this is not uh, enough. This is not enough. This only equation uh, we we can't solve for omega dot and ag. We have other equations also. So but what I am saying is that using this equation along with the other other two or three ones, we can solve for omega dot and ag. And when we know omega dot, we can find out the position of different uh, points on a rigid body. But how we are going to do so? That is our uh, today's. Uh, discussion point. Okay. Uh, is it clear now? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so let us take a uh, rigid body. So So this is a rigid body and let's take some O dash point and let's take some P point. Okay. Oh, uh, let me take some different point. Um, because this will overlap and we don't want that to happen. So Let's take this as O dash and let's take this as B. So <laughs> nice drawing. These are straight lines. I am seeing them, them as straight and I hope you are also seeing them as straight. So this is R. Yeah. Are you seeing them as straight lines? If not, you yes. correct your whatever thing you, you have to correct. <laughs> OK, so this is R O dash and this is R P dash. So uh, the question uh, is that given. Given. R O dash with respect to O. And R. O dash with respect to O. R P with respect to O dash theta and theta dot. So basically uh, uh, let's assume that this body has made some uh, is at an angular. Uh, let's consider a frame attached to this. I will elaborate this, but for this point of time, let us assume that we have a frame like this and it has rotated by theta. OK, so if we are given these things. We are given what is the position of this origin of new frame with respect to the previous frame. And uh, we are given what is the position of P with respect to the order that is what is the position of p in new frame so we need to find out uh, something we need to find out what is r p with respect to o we need to find out what is r p with respect to o dot we need to find what is acceleration of p with respect to o so you may ask uh, so why are we doing this? OK. This might be your question and this should be your question. So why are we doing this? So basically uh, sometimes what happened that we know the position of points in some frame. OK, some local frame we do. For example, let's assume we are riding a cycle. And I am riding a cycle, so I know where the horn is. I know if uh, I am standing on the seat, the horn is on the left and it is at a five meter from 
from my chest first uh, example. I know this, and it will be there for all the time. So in a moving frame which is attached to me, the location of this, uh, the location of this uh, horn is known. But if someone tells you what is the position of horn with respect to some ground fixed frame, so it becomes a problematic. So uh, that is what I am saying. And when we try to apply physics and laws of physics, it usually these laws are usually applied in the base frame or the inertial frame. So we need to convert all the information in the base frame. OK, so this is today's uh, today's concern. So. So you have have you got the question? Yes, sir. Now I uh, yeah? understand what we are what we are going to do, sir. Yes. Okay. So let us take uh, uh, let us take example. So let us consider a body like this. OK, so this is a body. OK, so at t is equal to zero. Uh, this is our I cap and this is our J cap. This is the fixed frame. Isn't it? Am I audible? Yes, sir. And yes. Let, us, let us assume that this is the center of mass. This is the center of mass which we call a C, OK? Uh, and uh, let us take a point here, call it as a point P. And let us take O point here, which is the origin of this fixed uh, reference frame. OK, you can also call it as inertial frame. And there is also a frame attached to the rigid body, uh, which at this point, uh, which at this point of time is not distinct from the inertial frame. OK, they are coinciding, so you cannot see, but I am attaching I dash to the body frame and see this is J dash. OK, and I am attaching a point at this position, which I will call as O dash. So at this point of time, you can't distinguish between and I know you are confused and that is good sign. Uh, you should get confused. So that is draw. That is draw this body at next instant of point time. So. This is. This is basically O dash. This is O, so the, that is what I was trying to make you understand. This point is O, it is the origin of fixed frame, OK? This is yes, sir, okay. fixed frame and IJ. is attached with the body. Yeah, and there is another frame which is attached to the body, and this is the I dash. And this is the J dash. See these I dash and J dash. These are vectors. OK, this is a unit vector in this direction. This is a unit vector in this direction. But these unit vectors are somehow glued to the body. As the body moves, these also move. OK. So now you have a point. This point is here. P e point and you. OK. So we have in inertial frame this vector and also we have this vector so and we have this vector also okay this vector okay so what is this vector 
this is r o dash or o dash o with respect to o okay and uh, what is this vector this is r p with respect to r o and is r what is this this is r p with respect to o dash okay these are fine yeah everything is fine yes sir. yes sir yeah yeah so yes. we so we can write r p we can write this r p with respect to o dash uh as c if you initially see this uh, vector this was like this uh, this was r p with respect to o dash okay and this was nothing but r p with respect to o was this at t equal yes, to yes. 0 Yes, t is, t is equal to zero. At t is equal to zero, you can see R P O dash and R P O. These are same. Okay. Are these same? Okay. Now yes. this frame has moved. This has rotated. This has rotated. Rotated. See if if this frame i dash j dash frame does uh, just a minute i have made this very so i am saying okay so this is so this i dash j dash frame this has rotated with respect to this i j had it not been rotated with respect to i and j this o dash o dash p vector would have still been equal to o p vector because we can move this vector to o okay you have this vector you drag it to o so it will coincide this o p at equal to zero whatever was o o, no, o p vector uh, at t equal to zero, O dash p vector will be still the same. Okay. So what I am trying to say is initially this p was here. So this was O and this was p. So initially this vector was here. Okay. Now what I am saying that body has rotated. Now you can see this vector is like this. If you drag this vector, okay, let us drag it. We have a tool to drag it. So let us drag it. I, um, okay, so why is it dragging? I am not able to drag it. So if we drag it and put it here, are you? What is what was this vector? Let me name it first. Op. Op. No, this is not op. This is o dash. Sorry, sorry. O. Now it, o now dash. it is o dash. So so o dash o dash. And what are these? These are i, I dash, i dash, and this and is j dash. dash. And these have actually these have rotated. These are not like this. These have rotated. Respect theta here. Respect to i. Yeah. Yeah.
<coughs> if you take, you can clearly see that O dash P and O P are not same, isn't it? And you can clearly see that basically O P dash O O P at equal to zero has been rotated to get this O dash P. So we can get this R P. We can get this R P O dash simply by rotating. Simply by we can get it by rotating R P O. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So we can get this by you. And R P O is the initial position vector of P with respect to O. That will not change. This vector will not change because it is something which is at T equal to zero. When T is not yeah. equal to zero, then it is RPO dash. And I will I will call, I have to write this at T equal to zero. Okay, I will, because there is difference between RPO. So if you join this P to O at any time, this is RPO. And RPO zero means, this vector at t equal to zero. OK, so let me assume that at t equal to zero, this R P. With respect to O. Is some X not I. Oh, whatever this we Sam. I don't know what is this. How is this happening? Mm -hmm. Last time this also happened. Then leave the SI, sir. We can go. Huh? Huh? Leave the We can go, sir. Why? <laughs> Just uh, one hour work. I did some to this. Are you seeing this? X not. No, no. Are you seeing this? Wait, wait, wait. Sir. I have. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pen, pencil, pen. Uh... Yeah. So I actually clicked this thing. Then this is doing this is wrong. Right. But I don't right. know how to correct it. But let us play hit and trial and get it correct. Uh, see what we. <coughs> yeah, I think it has now corrected. Yeah. Thank. <laughs> OK, so I was saying that this R P O at T equal to zero. It will have some X component and it will have some o J component. So I can write this R P O as x naught i plus y naught j okay so basically if you project this this is x naught and this is y naught is this okay okay sir can you tell me what r p with respect to O dash at any time, how we can represent it in components? See, uh, see, see, I will, I will redraw it so that you have better understanding. So this is I, this is J. This is I dash. This is J dash. This is O. This is O dash. And there was a body like this. And this was P. And this vector is our R P with respect to O dash. So can you tell me what? How can we write this R P O dash as a component? Yeah. 
sir with with respect to fixed frame or with respect no, no, to any anything you want cos theta sin theta uh, it is y component will be sin theta and uh, x component will be cos theta so this is theta. the theta hmm. so what should i write what cos of theta see one thing is there if you note what is this distance why why not which was or it enough. cannot change see this is a fixed body isn't it yes, this is a fixed body you cannot change this distance and this frame is attached to the body so this distance can't change similarly what is this distance x not x not so you can write this rpo it has two components y not and x not it is x not distance in this i i dash uh, vector so we can write this as x not i dash plus y not j dash yes. can we write yes sir yeah yes okay so now the problem is so we 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 have represented this rp with respect to o dash at any time but still there is a problem we we are defining it in terms of this body frame and b dash c i dash and j dash these are defining our new frame which is body frame okay and this is our fixed frame that is i and j this define our fixed inertial frame isn't it so we need to represent this vector in inertial frame for that we have to represent this i dash and j dash in inertial frame so we need to look at this i dash in terms of i and j so you can see here this is i isn't it i can be written as uh, i dash yeah. i dash written as yeah cos theta i plus sin uh, theta j okay okay correct yes sir so in matlab we have been using it like this i dash has two components yeah i dash the vector it has see it has two components isn't it sure. it has cos theta along and this is in fixed frame don't forget this this is in inertial frame we are represented this i dash in fixed frame and it yes. has two components x component is cos of theta and y component is sin of theta okay similarly yes, you can represent this j dash in fixed frame as uh, first let me write it here so j dash you can write it as so j dash Minus is this so it will Minus. make this angle with vertical okay so uh, along uh, x axis x axis it will be minus sine of theta i and plus cos, cos of, of theta, theta j is it clear yes clear clear okay so we have two components for it minus sine of theta and cos of theta okay okay yes 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 oh so now we can write if uh, if you see we can write this uh, rpo we can rewrite it okay let me clear something okay we can clear this portion uh, or we can do something like this uh, where is this okay
Okay, so we can write R P O dash as X naught. What is this I dash? We can I write dash. it in. So in components, OK, I will write this in components and also in fixed frame. Yeah. Yes, so sir. If we need to represent it in um, a body frame, we have already represented it. OK, yeah, this is in this is in body frame. We have represented it. But if we want to represent it in fixed frame or in inertial frame, so then RPO dash is nothing but X naught. What is this I dash? It is cos theta sin theta, isn't it? Yes, sir. So it is cos theta sin theta plus y naught. This is minus sin theta cos theta. minus sin theta cos theta. Okay. Yes. So I can further write it as cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta x naught y naught can i write it see from here cos theta x naught sin theta x naught. take the x component what is the x component of rp cos theta x naught plus y naught cos theta see here cos theta x naught why not the why not into sign r? This is x from both of these. If you solve this, what you will get? I think you are not getting this. Okay, let me further uh, solve it. So if you solve this, what will we get? We on top we will get x not cos of theta uh, minus y not sine of theta okay here it should be minus here it should be plus okay now it yes okay now it is okay similarly x naught sine of theta okay x naught sine of theta plus y naught cos this is okay now okay you will get another from here and these two equations we can represent it like this okay is it OK? No, no, it's OK. Uh, so. I will write this R P O dash. In fixed frame. Is nothing. What is this? Cos theta sine theta. Cos theta sine theta. It is I dash in fixed frame, isn't it? I dash in fixed frame. What is minus sin theta cos theta? It is J dash representing fixed frame. Can you do you know what this X naught Y naught is? Initial position that is uh, yeah. R, R P sir. That is sorry, yeah. R. So this is nothing but R P with respect to O at time zero. OK. Yes, sir. so if you go back. We we already made this point that R P with respect to O dash should be some rotation times initial vector. And we have got this rotation. This rotation is this. So RPO dash in fixed is something times the initial thing, and this thing we call as a rotation matrix. So what is this? This is rotation matrix. Okay, and it is denoted as R. R. Okay. Better to write it like this. See, every notation or every symbol or representation, it is. You should be very careful. You will be. You will see in coming classes how they are different. So I am writing R like this. It means something that I am representing. So what is this R now equal? This R as a component uh, is equal to. 
दिस इज इक्वल टू आई डैश बट रिप्रेजेंटेड इन फिक्सड फ्रेम सिमिलरली हियर इट इज X component J. of J dash and J component of J dash. Okay, and we also saw that those are nothing but cos of theta, sine of theta minus, minus sine. sine. Okay. So, but see what this rotation matrix tells us. It tells us that if we have some, if we have some vector R P O. and we rotate it see it was fixed to the rigid body and we rotated that rigid body due to the rotation this vector now changed uh, see vec vector is something which uh, has direction and magnitude although the magnitude has remained unchanged but the direction has got changed so this is not the same vector as it was so we have, we have got new vector and that new vector is r p o dash if you want to get that rpo dash you have to rotate this vector and this is the rotation matrix which will give you so uh, if you have if you have some frame and uh, you are rotating it with respect to the base frame or the fixed frame so this is the rotation matrix which will uh, which will give you the uh, which will give you the uh, uh, this uh, vector in the base frame okay and see the beauty why i am writing this so you you may uh, you may ask me that why are why have you uh, wrote it like this although this was sufficient why you have wrote uh, wrote it like this so the thing is that you can directly tell from this that if we have a if we have a 3d thing okay i J and K, and we have some vector uh, P. Okay, and this vector is, for example, let us say it is uh, attached to a rigid body. Now, when you rotate this rigid body. Say we have i dash, we have j dash, and we have something in this direction as k dash. You rotate, so this i dash, j dash, k dash will rotate with respect to this i, j, and k. Okay, so we want to find out what is this position vector p in the base frame. So that why we are locating it in the base frame. so that we can we can animate it we can use the uh, laws of physics okay and other stuff there this is the only reason so how you will get rpo so rpo dash which here is itself o so rpo dash is nothing but rpo at any time in fixed frame this will be equal to rotation times r p at zero time at zero time you see what was r p o you rotate it you will get at any time what is this r p o r which is also equal to r p o see here i am not separating the origins i am thinking that both the base frame and the body frame and the fixed frame they are they have the common origin only thing that they are rotating so rp o dash and rp o these are same thing but see this rp o it is changing with time and at zero time it was rp o zero so at any time if you want to calculate rp o you have to rotate this initial vector but what is this r 
So you can see from, from this, you, you can't say anything. Can you predict anything from this formula? R is for 2D, we had this for 2D, we had R equal to cos of theta minus sine of theta, sine of theta, cos of theta. Can you predict to what will be the R corresponding to the 3D? No, no, sir. No, but can you but predict it from here? What should yes, be yes. R? So what should be yes, R? I dash F uh, column. I, I dash, dash F. Dash F, F. Uh, J, J dash F. F and, and K dash F. F. So this is your rotation matrix. Okay. So just you have to multiply. So. So uh, you are R P O in fixed frame is nothing but R. R is nothing but I prime represented in fixed frame. J prime represented in fixed frame. K prime represented in fixed frame. OK, so. R P with respect to O at zero time. So how many elements are in this? In this, can you I dash and fix three? Three. That is I dash in uh, along I direction, J direction, and K direction. This will have three. How many this will have? Three. How many this will have? Three. So this rotation matrix in 3D will have three cross oh. three order. Nine. Yes, order. So you are basically Nine. multiplying three cross three with RPO. Oh. How many elements does this have? Three cross one. Yes, three cross one. That is this, 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 and this. Three elements. So you will get okay. So this was the That's only way. Uh, yeah. So this was the only reason why I uh, represented this like this. Okay. Okay. So I want to utilize this uh, time to introduce a new thing, which I hope will be. I think you might have come to know about this rotation matrix before. You are knowing this. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. In different yeah. material. Yeah. So you were knowing. Okay. This is good, but yeah, you should practice these things so that you get uh, <coughs> uh, easy with them. Okay. Yes, sir. So now, yes, sir. Yes. yeah, yeah. I will uh, introduce something which is known as triad because. Uh, strength are material strengths and several students use this thing. OK, in mat material engineering and something like that. So you will be using this in higher classes. So just I want to give you the introduction. Uh, maybe we will not uh, using it much, but uh, it is good to, to get some like uh, definition, basic definition, what the art is uh, like. You have also come to know about uh, tensors. So. That is I want to introduce here what this means. So you saw that uh, this uh, rotation was nothing but I prime in fixed frame, J prime in fixed frame. Okay. Okay. Oh, so uh, let us let let me take three vectors. If uh, I have a vector A and I have a vector B and I have a vector C. So there are so many operations which we can define. For example, we can define A cross B cross C. We can define this. For example, we can take cross product of this and then with this, or we can take cross product of these two, then this. Because if we take the cross product of two vectors, if it, will, it will give the vector, and then we can make uh, the cross product with another. So this is a valid operation, okay. Similarly, um, but you cannot do like this, A dot B 
cross C. Is this a valid operation? Valid operation A dot B. No, sir. Because no. This, is, because uh, this, this will be a scalar. Concept. So you will get some scalar. You cannot cross a scalar with, uh, with a vector. It doesn't have any meaning. Okay. So this is not a valid operation. But you can do one thing. Uh, you can uh, write like uh, A, B dot C. Can we write like this? Is this a valid operation? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, this is a valid operation. OK, so what does this mean? This means that we are taking B and we are making dot product with C. It will give us a scalar and we are making scalar product of a vector with some scalar. And we know if we multiply a vector by a scalar, it is a valid operation and it increases the magnitude of a, uh, of a vector by the scalar times. OK, so this is a valid operation. Isn't it? So in order to get a feel that it is a valid operation, let us take a few. Let us take some example. So A, let's take I plus J plus K. And let us take B equal to uh, 2 I, I minus J. No, no, we will, we will go with this. So I want it to be clear. OK, so C, let us take C as J. So what is? Uh, a is I plus J plus K. Uh, B dot C, what is B dot C? This one. dot with this, that is minus one, isn't it? Yeah, so minus one times this, so this will give us minus I minus J minus K. And this is a valid, this, so we have got a vector. So basically, uh, th th this operation is a valid operation. But uh, I will I will uh, define some notion and I will put this A and B side by side. And I will call this as dir. What is this? Can you repeat, sir, what you say that I can take this side I side am side. saying that I define, I put these A and B vectors side by side. Okay. See, there was okay. A, B dot C. I have put this A and B <coughs> side by side. And then I am saying that if I take some third vector C, if I take some third vector C, if I use this dir, I can do operation like this. What can I do? A, B, when I operate this diode on third vector, it does something like this. Okay. And I, I know this is not uh, easy to swallow, but uh, when we will get uh, to the rotation in uh, 3D space, so maybe there you will get the feeling why why we are taking this A and B and stacking them together. But at this point of time, you just understand that we are putting two vectors together. And when we take the operation, diode operation on third vector, they operate like this. That is A vector sits here. And there is second vector takes the dot product with the given vector on which you are operating this diode. B dot C. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes. OK, hope uh, uh, the abstract thing which I am creating uh, is clear to you. OK, so. Now see what will happen. I, now I will define some triad and. Uh, let, uh, so. I will take a triad. We also call it as a tensor. So uh, R 
or let me take it as uh, I and I plus J and J. This C, this is a vector like A and this is a vector like B. This is a vector like A, this is a vector like B. So I have defined a diode like this, okay? Now, if I take dot product, take this diode and take the dot product with uh, I, okay? So what should we get? Let us see what we will get. So basically, this is I dash. Is it I dash? I plus J dash J dot. Oh no, I, I should not use this notion because this symbolizes something else. Uh, let me wrap this off. Okay. Ah, so I should I should strip the, this notation. So it is a dot with I. OK, and this we can write as I. Dash I. Dot I. Plus J. Dash J. Dot I. And I, I have already told that if you have two uh, vector side by side and you are taking the dot product with some vector. So basically it means. Second will take the dot product and multiply with the first vector. Similarly, this will be J dash. J dot J dot I. Dot I. OK, and this is zero. This is one and we will get. I dash. dash. Okay. So if we uh, if we do not use the diode concept, uh, even though yeah. it, uh, it is I dash. What what? Uh, if I'm we not do here. not know, uh, if we don't know the diode concept. Uh, yeah. Even even though we can say that. R even then I, we can say. Even then we can say that R dot I is mm -hmm. equal to I dash. How can we say? R is not a rotation. See, R I have defined. This is not that R. This is not this R. OK, this is a different thing. I have defined it like this. So I have defined it like this. And now I am taking the. Can you take the dot product here? This is this is the matrix. How? How will you take the dot product of vector with matrix? Is that operation a valid operation? Yeah. No, no, these see, I am not stressing you. I am not stressing you. Just I you have a better question. These questions should arise in your mind because this is something which is very new. So when these questions strike your mind, then only you can understand something. So th this is a valid question which you have, but what I am saying, OK, you have this question, but now you should look. You are saying that I will take the dot product of I with, rest, with, the, uh, with the rotation matrix, but will that be a valid operation? Can you take a matrix and dot it with the vector? I don't think that is a, uh, that is a valid operation. But yeah, you can do one thing. I know what you are saying, so we will. Go and what you are saying is that if we uh, if we take the rotation matrix and we multiply I, we will get I dash. I hope you are saying this thing. Yeah. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And you should get. See, uh, I am not stupid. I have. <laughs> I have defined the R diad as this. So there was, uh, what can I say? So I was knowing that I have to define it like this. Why? See you in few minutes, you will get to know why I defined R like this. This is the diad. This is not that R. 
there is difference. So R I have defined is I dash I plus J dash J. Say all of these are vectors and these vectors are totally independent of the frames. No need of frames. If there is no frame, even then these vectors are there. But <coughs> if you see this rotation matrix, it is totally associated with the frames. You define one frame, you define another frame, then you say that this is the rotation matrix of the components of the I dash in this frame or that, whatever we have done till now. But here, these are totally, these are vectors. These are not some components or other stuff. This is a vector, this is a vector, this is a vector, this is a vector. So somehow this R and which with two lines in the bottom, this is something like vector. I am not saying that it is a vector. It has totally different properties, but like vectors have their own existence. They don't depend upon the frame, although they can be represented in different frames. By representing them into different frames, I mean that uh, they have different component uh, in different frames. You can take a vector. It will have different components in one frame. It, have, it will have different components in another frame. Same vector. OK, but the vector will not change. Vector will have some magnitude and it will have direction. You change your frame, the vector will not change. OK, I am saying it is a free vector. It is not, you are not rotating it. OK, just you are changing your frame. You are taking this frame. You are taking that frame. Your vector is there, that is there. That is That has its own existence. Similarly, I am saying that this R and two lines below, that is R tensor, it has its own existence. It doesn't, it doesn't depend upon the frames. Okay. It doesn't depend. It has component in different frames, but it doesn't depend upon that. Let me take some water. Till then you also swallow these things. If they get stuck in your thought, you can also take water. Yeah, so uh, so similarly, you can uh, this is uh, you can do it by yourself. I will not do it because it it is in the similar fashion. So you can take R and uh, dot it with J. What you will get? You will get J prime. Yes. Same procedure. You can follow the same procedure and you will see that this you will get. So, uh, so you have got a nice thing. You have this R. You are taking the dot product with I. It gives you I dash. You are taking the dot product with J. You get J dash. So if you remember, this was our I and this was our J. Sir, sir can you repeat? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Can you repeat previous? Sir, can you repeat previous thirty seconds? Okay. I was saying uh, uh, that R is this. Okay. And I was saying that if you take R and dot it with J, you will get J dot J dash. Uh, so I was saying that. This is our pre, this is our fixed frame I and J, and you rotate your body frame. Okay, you rotate your body frame, and this is the body frame configuration. Okay, after some time, you get this I prime from this I. How? You get it simply by taking dot product with R. So if you want, so basically this I and I dash were same. When you rotate this I, you get I, I dash. When you rotate this J, you get J dash. And what I am saying in words, 
Mathematically, this is what I am saying. R dot I gives you I prime. R dot J gives you J prime. So basically, you have to operate this R tensor diode, whatever you call it. You operate this on the vector, you will get the new vector or the rotated vector. Okay. So it means yes, that if you operate this R on RPO, vector A. you will get yeah. R P rotated O dash. Okay. Okay, you will get this. So So basically this R uh, is similar to the rotation matrix, but uh, this is not a matrix. So that is why I, am I have represented it in a different way. Matrix, where, wherever I have used matrix, I have just used the R and uh, uh, I am putting this thing. Yeah, it means that it is a matrix. But see, this is not a matrix. This is not a matrix. This is something. This is general, yeah. That is what I am trying to make you understand. You can take it in any frame. Okay, but yeah, in each frame it will have its uh, components. And let us see, let us see what those components will be. Okay. Uh, so let us take, let us take A vector and let us take B vector and let us take, uh, K C vector. So I am saying that we can stack these A and B together. And if you want to operate on C, this is how they will operate. And uh, you know, if you take B dot C, uh, B X I plus B Y J plus B Z K dotted with C X I plus C Y J plus C Z K. You take dot product for what you will get. You will get B X C X B Y plus B Y C Y plus B Z C Z. Okay. Okay. This this is simply this is nothing but uh, a scalar, and you have this vector A. What is this A? A X I plus A Y J plus A Z K. OK. And you multiply these two, what you will get? You will get A X B X. A X B X. Uh, I A sorry A X B X C X I. Plus A Y. B Y. C Y. J. Plus A Z. B Z. C is that K? Is it right? Yes, sir. I don't know whether I am doing right or wrong, but uh, I suppose I am doing something good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it happens you are not knowing what you are doing. But okay, so uh, if we have a vector A in matrix, we represent this vector as AX, AY, AZ. Okay. And Sir, uh, we are doing wrong. Why? So this is AX times BX, CX, BY, CY plus BZ, CZ into I dash. Then what, what BX. See what I have done. That is last, last step, last step, last step. So this is uh, AX, BX. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This all is actually, yeah, now I am correct. I was feeling that this is not correct, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so, AX, BX, CX times X, uh, AX, 
correct me when I am wrong. This I hope you are understanding. That is why you were able to find out the mistake. So this is A X B Y C Y, and this also is uh, A X. Yeah. This this is A X. Okay. So this is whole. This is I. Yeah. Yes, sir. Similarly, you will get a y same stuff plus a y this same stuff plus a is y same, same this b z c z g. Similarly, you will get here a z a z a z. Okay, same stuff. Yes, sir. And key. Which is a vector which has three components. This is X component, this is Y component, and this is Z. But see, when you are dealing, uh, when you are uh, doing it in the MATLAB, this is not the this is not the right thing to do it. Okay. So in MATLAB, what uh, how we will do this? If we have to do this uh, dyadic product or something like this, how we will do this? So for that, I am saying that if we have A like this. And uh, we have another vector B, which is uh, Bx, Bx, Bz, and we have C, which is Cx, Cy, Cz. Okay. Uh, we define dot product. How we define dot product? So if we have B dot C, we define it as B C. Representation. See the representation. This b vector inside this square braces minus you are writing its component in column vector okay bx by bz basically this is oh i have i should write it like this this is not a vector this is just its components yeah okay yeah. so yes, b when i am b run it is just bx b and bz column okay so yeah. I will do multiplication, matrix multiplication with what? With C transpose. I think either I can do this. No, 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 I have done wrong. I have done wrong. V dot doesn't mean this. B dot C means B dot C means B transpose C. Okay, B transpose yes, C. See, you will write B transpose here BX, BY, BZ, and C. What is C? Yeah. C is CX, CY, C. Now this is a matrix multiplication. First row, first column. You will get one element, and that element is this: b x c x b y c y and b z. So this this MATLAB knows how to do. This is just a matrix multiplication. Yeah. Matrix will do it. He matrix will return you this value. Okay. So done with this part. B dot c. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yes. Sir. But the thing is how we can do this a b dot c yeah and yeah. particular this a b yeah so i will show how matlab does this and how we can do it in the so this is known as inner multi uh, inner product okay this is known as dot product or inner product inner product now we will define something product it is we will define something which is known as an outer product. Uh, so we will define outer product. Uh, so if we have vector A which is here and B which is there, so we define outer product a b sorry a 
P. After product of A and B. Or dyadic product of A and B. Or tensor product of A and B. Anything you can call it as. I think these are some of the. Yeah, tensor product, outer product, matrix product associated with the. Uh, Di a matrix associated with the dyadic product, anything you can call it. OK, so how will we how we define the outer product? It is like this. A take the components of A and uh, take the matrix multiplication with B transpose. OK. So what is A? It is AX, AY and AZ. What is uh, uh, what is this uh, B transpose? It is BX, BY, and BZ. Okay, so first row, first column. Yeah, first row, first column. What you will get? AX, BX. First row, second. Uh, second row, first column. A Y B X A Z B X A X B Y A Y B Y A Z B Z A X B Z A Y B Z A Z B Z. So this is the outer product of two vectors. Okay. Uh, so you can see if you take the inner product of A and B, you get you get just a number, which is a scalar, which is actually the yeah. Uh, you are asking something. How do you do this, sir? A, AX first to uh, uh, row, uh, first column is understood, but how you get second column and third? See, uh, how we define the matrix multiplication. We take first row, first column. First row is AX. What is first column? Yes, BX. So this is this first yeah. element will be AX, BX. What will be a second element of second row first column? That is A Y B X. What is this third element? This is third row first column. So basically, you are multiplying this first column with different rows. You get these three. Second, yeah. you do, you take first row second column. That is A X B Y. Second row second column. That is A Y B Y. Okay, is this yes, clear? Sir. Okay, so this yeah. so this is how you can this is how you define the outer product between two vectors and MATLAB can do this for you. If you have two vectors A and you have B, you uh, you create a vector like this. You create B vector and take it as transpose. Do the matrix multiplication and you will get this. OK. Yeah, yes, sir. OK, yes, sir. Yes, so sir. now let us take third vector. Let us take C vector. Let us take C vector and uh, uh, dot uh, this C vector with this. So basically, what was C vector? It was nothing but uh, uh, C X C Y C Z. Okay. So you can multiply this with this, this with this, this with this. You you will get how many elements? So when you take the multiplication like this, so what is this basically? This is nothing but a b, and what is this? This is dot with c. Mm. Okay, so you will get a x b x c x plus a y b y c y plus a z b z c z. OK, this will be your first. Semi uh, sorry. Don't. Uh, take this back. Yeah. yeah. OK. Take a long break. So this is nothing. A, B, dot, C. A Y B X C X plus A Y B X A Y B X so A Y B Y C Y 
اوكي بلس اي فاين بي زد اي هوب اي ام دوينج كوريكت اف اي نيد اف اي ام ميكينج اني ميستيك ليت مي نو بيكوز يو نو وين يو ار دوينج سو ماتش ستاف يو ليك يور ذس وات وي كان تراك سام تايمز سو اي زد بي اكس سي اكس plus az by cy plus az bz cz okay uh, and this was ax so here i am you can mistake this is ax okay ax bz cz ax bz cz so ax by so this is here is also a mistake this is ax so ax by cy ax by c now this is good. okay so basically uh, a b dot c a b dot c so uh, basically uh, uh, this was not a b dot c let me correct it and write it what actually this was uh, this was uh, this was something we called at called it as a dyadic uh, b okay we got a matrix from here and we dotted this with c isn't it this is what we did till now but if you compare this with this ax bx cx ax by cy ax bz cz ax bx cx ax by cy ax bz cz are you getting same thing yes, sir. similarly a y a y bx cx a y b so you are getting same what was this thing how did you got, got this you get this yeah you, th this you got while doing this thing basically you had uh, uh, you had this a vector you had b vector and you were operating this on c and you know how this operates this and i was saying that how matlab will do this so uh, we did this uh, using our brain using our knowledge of doing uh, mat you uh, using uh, this vector multiplication and other stuff we use our brain but matlab doesn't know this thing okay matlab does not know how to take these dot products like this and then taking other stuff and something but we have if we have a b and c and we want to take this operation we can take this we can take this operation because if you want to take a b dot c you can get the components like this do this operation and you know how to this operation and matlab also knows how to take this operation and you will get the components of this are you getting my point Yeah. Yeah, 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 yes. Understood. Uh, okay. I think this uh, is enough for now uh, about the tensors and the diodes. Uh, maybe in future we will be again using this thing. But now let us go back and uh, see where we left uh, our discussion. So going back to the discussion. So we had this thing. Uh, Uh, we had O dash. There was a P point. There was this R P with respect to O dash. This was a vector in space, and this was our body frame, and this was our. fixed frame oh sorry this was our fixed frame okay so uh, we wh what was our need what we were looking for we were looking for 
position of P in inertial frame. That is, we are looking for this thing. OK, this this was our starting point. We are looking for the position of this P point in inertial frame. But what we have got, we have got RP with respect to O dash. We have got this vector. And what was this vector equal to? This was rotation matrix times uh, RP. Uh, if we take its components in fixed frame, so it was uh, R P O at time zero. See this, this, uh, this is the special case of this vector. This is at time t equal to zero, but we want this at any time. Okay. So and uh, remember one thing: I am using these interchangeably. This. R and this R. These are same. Sometimes I use this, sometimes I use this. Don't think that they are different. This and this are same. Just uh, I uh, I am become actual of these things. So what you should keep in mind that this and these are same. I use interchangeably them. So but yeah, difference here between this and this is only that this is a special case of this at t equal to zero. So we got this vector at any time, but we go, didn't uh, get this vector RP with respect to O. We didn't get this vector, OK, but we are looking for that. So how to get it? So it is not that much difficult. So we know this is our R O, o dash and we want to find out basically this vector. OK, so this vector which is R P with respect to O is equal to R O O dash plus plus R P with respect to O dash vector, isn't it? Yes, sir. And this is equal to R O O dash plus what is this? This is rotation R times R rotation R times. R RPO R P O not. Sir, will R O dash change? But it will. What what? R O O dash. Obviously, this will change. Change. When body moves, this changes. It will have some different. But see, I, we have made assumption. What is this R O O dash? It is the position vector of this O dash in inertial frame in this fixed frame. And we have made assumption that we know it. If we go back. Uh, uh, OK. Uh, so see. We have made assumption that these things are known. R O dash O. These are known. Theta is known. OK, so yep. this was a starting point. We made it given yep. R. OK, so given R O dash O, R O dash U, and this theta theta dash, we are given these. Only thing is we need to find the velocity and position of this P in global frame. OK. If we are given these in inertia, uh, this uh, body frame, this was our starting point. OK, so now uh, have we got it? Let us see. This is very important to discussion and very important to concept. You should be clear with this concept. Is. Uh, only then. So uh, we have this position of this P with respect to O as R position of O dash with respect to. O. So this is not uh, I, have, I have written it wrong. This is O dash with respect to O. O dash with respect to O. OK, uh, OK, and then RP with respect to O dash. That is R this. OK, let us be. Uh, so RP with respect to O. 
is equal to R. Uh, I am writing this all in component form, okay? In fixed frame. Is all are in fixed frame. Okay. So R O dash with respect to O. What is this R? If you remember, this is cos theta, uh, sine theta, minus sine theta, cos, cos theta. theta. And what is this R P O? This is nothing but X naught Y naught. Which, which is fixed. This is fixed. This is like in uh, in body frame, what is the position of P from X axis and from Y axis? This is fixed. So if you are given this, if you are given theta, if you are given the position of O dash, you can find RP with respect to O. So what else you need? So basically you are, what, see what you can get from this. No, uh, is it just that we are making the fun? Or uh, does, uh, uh it has any or uh, it has any value so basically you would like to animate this figure this body which is in the l shape but to animate it you need to locate the point for example if you if you can plot this point when this body moves you should be knowing what is the position of this corner what is the position of this corner what is the position of this corner so only if you know the position of different corners as the body rotates and moves, you can plot this body. Just to, you know where the corners are, what are the coordinates of corners in the inertial frame. You give command to the MATLAB, plot these points. MATLAB plots and you will find a, uh, find a picture representing your rigid body. This is the basic... Uh, uh, basic idea behind what we are doing and why we are doing this. So this rotation matrix is very important in uh, uh, in getting it. OK, so unless and until you don't do this programming and other stuff, uh, it will not make uh, uh, much. I will I highly encourage you to go and uh, take. Uh, uh, so go go and simulate this thing you have some box scare box take simple one which is one unit in this direction and one unit in the this direction simulate this make this uh, uh, take this for example at t equal to zero let it let this four dash let this four dash O dash with respect O, let it at t equal to zero, let it be one comma one. So it is one comma one distance. So this square will be here. Plot this square at t equal to zero. Then at uh, some other time, let you rotate this by theta. Rotate this uh, by theta. How you, uh, when you rotate this by theta, how it should look like on the screen? It should look like this. And this is theta. So this should get rotated by theta. But how you will plot it? So you have to use this rotation matrix because you have to get the coordinates of this, this, this. When you are plotting initially, since you know the coordinates of this point, you can get the coordinates of this one, this one, and this one. Okay. But now, this has moved to this point. This has moved to this point. This has moved to this point. You, you want to find out what is the position of this. In what? In global frame. In this fixed frame. So you get position of this, this, this. How you get? Using this formula. So try to uh, go and try to simulate this thing. Okay. Once, once you simulate this thing, only then you will appreciate this rotation matrix and other stuff. Uh, otherwise, uh, this will not make much sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, before finishing today's lecture, uh, let's also calculate the velocity uh, because at the uh, onset of the lecture, we like uh, we were searching for these two. We want uh, we want uh, this RPO which we have already got. 
But the second thing which we were looking is what is VP? What is the velocity of? What is the velocity of this point P? Why is this point P? Oh, this. What is the velocity of this point P? So uh, we can write uh, R P with respect to O as R O dash with respect to O plus rotation times. This is not cross product. This is simple matrix multiplication. R time, I will write it as star because in MATLAB we have star for this multiplication. And R P with respect to O at time. Is this OK? Just we saw that we can write the position of this as this plus this, and this is nothing but R times RP, which is an issue. OK, so if we take the derivative, the derivative also you can take in two ways. You can take derivative with respect to the body frame or with respect to the inertial frame. Let us take the derivative with respect to the inertial frame. When I am saying I am taking the derivative with respect to the inertial frame, it means that you are seeing the coordinates of this RPO vector. That is the the you take this vector, you measure its x coordinate, you measure its y coordinate, and when this point moves in time, you are seeing how its x coordinate moves in this frame, in this i j frame or the fixed frame. You see how its x coordinate moves. You see how its y coordinate moves. So when I am saying take the derivative of RPO in inertial frame, it means that you are seeing the rate of change of the components in X and uh, in this fixed frame, IJ frame. OK, so this the, taking the derivative, so I will write it here. Taking. Derivative. With respect to. Fixed frame or inertial frame. OK. So what we will get, we will get RPO. I will uh, write this dot equal to solid dot. Huh? It means with respect to fixed frame. Time derivative of RP with respect to fixed frame. And this is equal to R dash plus R star RPO. OK dot and dot. And this is nothing but this is velocity which we are searching for. So this is velocity of P with respect to this O as seen in uh, fixed frame. This is equal to this is velocity of O dash. With respect to O, OK, plus. See, this is derivative of this is constant, so it doesn't have any derivative. Only thing R will have derivative. OK. So derivative of R times R P O. This is constant. This this vector is not changing. This is the initial vector. Initial vector cannot change. It has fixed value. OK. When it changes, it becomes new vector, but we are not dealing with the new vector. This is the initial vector. OK. OK, so now. See what is this R dot? This is nothing but cos theta sine theta and uh, minus sine theta cos theta dot. OK, so it is dot of this dot of this dot of this. And what is this equal to? It is or d by dt of cos of theta is minus sine of theta minus. and theta dot. So minus theta dot sine of theta. Wait. What is this? Yeah. Minus theta dot theta cos, cos of theta. minus. Cos. Sorry, plus theta dot cos theta minus theta dot sine. Yeah. Theta. Is it OK? Yeah, OK, OK, OK. OK, so I want to rewrite this because I have a nice way of writing this. So I will write this. 
r dot is equal to put a dot minus r dot dot r dot equal to i can write it as 0 0 minus theta dot minus theta dot okay time as cos theta minus sin theta sin theta cos theta okay what is theta dot omega minus omega yeah this is minus omega okay so what is this do you remember what is this yes sir r dot no this is not r dot r dot of r is it r it is r it is simply r cos theta minus sin theta sin theta cos this is r isn't it yes yeah so see uh you have r you have r and you know what r is Okay, cos theta sine theta is that stuff. Your body is moving; it is rotating, and your R is also changing. So we are defining the rate of change of R, which is R dot. So at any instant of point, the body has some orientation; it has some theta, and corresponding to that theta, it has some R. but what about the rate of change of r at that instant of point you can get it how you can get it using this formula so you have omega at that point which is nothing but d theta upon dt so omega you have and uh, you have omega basically omega is a vector which is nothing but omega cap okay so omega vector is this if i write omega as something as component there is only one component which is omega isn't it yeah yes sir yes oh uh, this is not this is not minus here this is plus this is also plus you can check you can check it from this you you multiply this you should get this yeah and if it is plus only then that this can happen okay so we have omega and uh, in component form we have just this omega but if we have this vector and i form i form this uh, i form this matrix from this omega i form this matrix are you getting me see this omega has yeah. only this component but out of this omega i am defining another another matrix which i call as this omega star this is not omega is this thing but i am calling as omega star this is known as cq symmetric matrix associated with associated with omega so omega was this but i am defining another matrix which is skew symmetric matrix uh, with respect to this uh, uh, with respect to this omega and what is that skew symmetric matrix that is 0 0 minus omega omega okay so this matrix has been derived from this okay but how it has been derived it has derived like this so that it is skew symmetric okay so so r dot is this so what is r dot it is it is skew symmetric matrix associated with angular velocity times rotation matrix okay so now going back so uh, why are we were doing this thing ah yeah here so going back so we have p p with respect to o equal to v o dash o plus what is this r dot this is omega cq symmetric times rotation matrix r 
time as this r no okay. 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 Yes, sir. Yes. And uh, you can see that so um, Okay. What is this R times R P O dash? This is R P with respect to O dash. Isn't it? R times this. So many times we have read this. Yeah, yeah. R P O dash. You can verify this thing. What you can verify that CQ symmetric matrix associated with Omega. If you multiply with this uh, vector, for example, this vector will have three components and this have two. Co sorry, this have two components in 2D. This is two cross two matrix. You multiply these two or you take the cross product of those these two you will get the same answer okay i think uh, we have few minutes so let me do it for you otherwise you should have done you should uh, do it but let me do it what i am trying to uh, see uh, what so omega so omega skew symmetric associated with omega is nothing but 0 0 minus omega and omega and what you are multiplying you are multiplying rpo this is just a matrix multiplication yeah this multiplication is matrix multiplication rpo it will have three components rpo x rpo y so it will have only two in 2d it will have two components okay so multiply these two, you will get first row times first column. This is zero and this is minus omega RP with respect to O dash Y component. Uh, and uh, then what will be second? This time is this omega times RP O dash X. So this is uh, what you will get when you multiply when you multiply this omega skew symmetric with r p o dash when you multiply it you get the answer i am saying that you will get the same answer if you if you cross multiply omega vector if you cross if you take the cross product of omega vector with r p o vector you will get the same answer see how what is this omega omega is 0 minus omega 0 0 omega i j, j and k what is this this is r p o dash x R P O dash Y zero. Okay. So first becomes zero, second becomes zero, third. Third is nothing but so what should this become? <coughs> yeah, is there uh, I think Azan is going, yeah? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, I leave it to you. You find uh, you proceed from it is it will take only one or two two minutes. You can do it. It is not a big uh, big deal. So you you should get the same like if you do this and you do this, you should get the same answer. Okay. So uh, the objective for today's class was that uh, given. So let's quickly remind what was our objective. Uh, so objective was that given the 
position of this P in this body frame, and given the position of O dash with respect to O, can you find the position of uh, P with respect to O? Yeah, and can you also find the velocity with respect to O? In next class, we will be doing uh, acceleration. Okay. And once we are done with that, then we will we will solve this double pendulum problem, and uh, that will be the end of I think. Or maybe I will do non holonomic problem, and then it will be the end of two D portion, and then we will shift to three D. Okay. Any problem. question? Yeah. Non holonomic, yes, sir. Non holonomic constant problem. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, we will do it uh, in uh, next couple of uh, lectures. So is everything clear or is there any question? Oh, no, and no, how no, was no. today's class? Did you enjoy or you find it very? Uh, Every class uh, uh, you give me a new intuition about the physics. <laughs> about okay, the NLM. But, but see, in today's class, there were some new things and which were totally abstract. I can understand. It takes some time to absorb. Today, today class, sir, I have used this transformation of the matrix into and then matrix in transformation of stresses, also in okay. 3D and 2D. Okay. Uh, nice. Uh, transformation of stresses when a plan yeah, is yeah, moving. Yeah, I, I, I got. Yes, yes, sir. So I, I have done this in previous semester. Okay, then it will be very useful for you to get, go through yeah. these rigorously. Yeah, okay. concept yeah, yeah, it will yeah, be very yeah. helpful. And I emphasize to do to like play with these tires. Okay, how I have defined it and how they operate and see, try to understand the difference between representing a vector in some frame, taking its components. And the vector is uh, try to differentiate these two things. These are totally two different things. Writing a vector is different, and writing it in some frame is different thing. I hope uh, these things will get clear in uh, coming lectures, but you should also take uh, a look on these things. Okay. Okay, I think I will first stop recording.